Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to do another problem with confidence intervals and population proportions. This will be a little bit of a different type of problem though to illustrate something a little bit unique. The question is, uh, you want to find a 98% confidence interval for the proportion of college students who get a student loan. Um, you read estimates that around 78% do get a loan. Um, but you want, uh, you want your max error to be around 5% for this confidence interval that you're doing. How many samples do you need? So see, we've turned the problem around. Usually we tell you how many samples, we tell you the data, uh, we tell you the confidence level, and you have to go construct a confidence interval. Here, we're actually telling you that we want the maximum error in our confidence interval to be around 5%. And we know everything else, but now we're trying to figure out how many samples do we need. See, that's a very common sort of thing when you're doing these uh, things in the real world. You want to take a survey and you want to create a confidence interval, but you need to know how many people do you need to ask. So we need to start from the beginning because it's not really obvious exactly how to do this. But you know that the level, uh, I'm sorry, that the uh, margin of error is equal to this critical value of z, basically this equation that we've used many times over 1 minus p and then we have n here. All right. So this is the sample proportion, this is the number of samples, and this is the critical value here. But what we're actually asked is we're, we're trying to find out how many samples do I need. That's the number n. How many samples? That's the number n. So really we have the equation that involves n, the margin of error, the level of confidence, and the proportion. So it involves everything, but we don't actually want to find e. We want to find what n is. How, what is the maximum number of um, or how many samples do I need to actually pull this off? That's what I want to do. So what we really want to do is solve this equation for n, right, this guy, which is not only in the denominator of a fraction, but it's also inside of the square root, right? So, you know, a lot of students ask me and email me over the years, and they, they ask me, when will I ever use algebra? When will I ever use algebra? Well, this is a great example. Your problem is not given to you in such a way that you can use this equation the way it is. You need to rearrange and solve for n so that you can solve the answer. And, and nobody's going to tell you how to do that. You just need to know the rules of algebra to actually do it. So let's do that. First of all, we want to get inside of this square root because everything else is inside of it. We, can't, we have to work outside to inside. All right, so the first thing we can do is we can square both sides because remember if we square the left hand side we can do anything we want to the left and the right hand side of an equation as long as we do it to both sides. So let's square the left hand side and that's going to give us e squared. When we square the right hand side you can think of this as being a term and then this thing with the square root being a term. So then you're going to apply the square to z sub c and that's going to be squared. But 